So this is a video to show you how to find the rule in a number sequence if the rule happens to be a quadratic one. Um, so let's look at this sequence. So when n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6, that's just the position of the number in the sequence. We've got this other number, q, that is 9, 22, 41, 66, and then some space for us to predict some further values. So it isn't an arithmetic sequence because the numbers don't go up by a fixed value every time. So to get from 9 to 22 you have to add 13, to get from 22 to 41 you have to add 19, to get from 41 to 66 you have to add 25. Another way to look at that is just to to subtract them backwards. So 22 minus 9 isn't the same as 41 minus 22, which isn't the same as 66 minus 41. Now it isn't a geometric sequence because the numbers don't increase by a constant factor every time. So whatever you have to multiply 9 by to get 22 isn't the same as what you have to multiply 22 by to get 41, and that isn't the same as what you have to multiply 41 by to get 66. Or another way to look at that is just to divide them back. So 22 divided by 9 isn't the same as 41 divided by 22, which isn't the same as 66 divided by 41. So there isn't a constant ratio from one term to the next. So could the rule be quadratic? Well, one way to figure that out is to consider the differences between consecutive terms then the differences between those differences. So I'm going to call the differences between the terms the first difference. So um, the difference between 9 and 22, 22 minus 9 in other words, is 13. And then the next one is not 13 again, but it's 41 minus 22, 19. And then the next one, 66 minus 41, 25. Now I'm going to look at the differences between those differences, which I'm call calling the second difference. So 9 minus 13 is 6 and 25 minus 19 is 6. So the second differences, the differences between the differences, appear to be constant from the information we have. So using that observation we could continue the pattern because we would expect the next second difference also to be 6, so we could fill that in. So we would expect the next first difference to be 31 25 plus 6, and then we would expect the next term to be 66 plus 31, 97. Then we would expect the next second difference to be 6 again, so we would expect the next first difference to be 6 more than it was before, then therefore we would expect the next term to be 97 plus 37, 134. So it's certainly possible to make a prediction about the subsequent terms in a sequence by observing a pattern without necessarily making a rule for it. But this video is going to show you how to make the actual algebraic rule that links Q and N, or that expresses Q in terms of N. So there's our um, original table again, taking out the predictions I made. And it is a fact that the second differences, if the second differences are constant, then the sequence can be described with a quadratic rule. So that's a solid gold fact. You can take that to the bank. That's always true. And furthermore, the quadratic coefficient will be half of the constant second difference. Well, what does that mean? 
Um, well, the constant second difference here is 6. So that's telling us that the rule for Q will involve a 3n squared. So the, this constant second difference is 6, as we saw in the table. So half of 6 is 3. So that tells us we know in this case that the rule for Q will involve a 3n squared. Um, just because 3 is half of 6. So that's something that will always be true, whatever the constant second difference happens to be. So there is our original table again. And I'm going to think to myself, what if the rule was just 3n squared? What would we get? Well, 3 times 1 squared would give me 3 times 1 times 1, which is 3. 3 times 2 squared would give me 3 times 4, which is 12. 3 times 3 squared would give me 3 times 3 squared, which is 27. Uh, 3 times 4 squared would give me 3 times 4 times 4, which is 48. And we won't think about 5 or 6 yet because we haven't got actual values to compare them to. But um, let's have a look at what we got and what we were looking for. So when we were looking for Q to be 9, the rule we tried only gave us 3. So there was a difference of 6. When we were looking for Q to be 22, the rule we tried only gave us 12. So there was a difference of 10. When we wanted 41, we only got 27. So there was a difference of 14. When we wanted 66, we only got 48. So there's, there was a difference of 18. So the difference between what we got from the rule we tried and what we actually wanted formed a sequence 6, 10, 14 and 18. And hopefully you can see a pattern to that. So having tried 3n squared as the rule, I'm now going to try... 3n squared plus 4n, because the fact that these are going up in 4s every time that the n's go up in 1 gives you a big clue that there must be a 4n somewhere in the rule. So trying 3n squared plus 4n as the rule, when n is 1, we're going to get the 3 that we got from 3n squared plus 4 times 1, which is going to give us 7. For the next one, we're going to have the 12 that we got from 3n squared plus 4 times the 2, so 12 plus 8 is going to give us 20. For the next one, the 27 that we got from 3n squared plus 4 times the 3 is going to give us 27 plus 12, 39. And for the next one, the 48 that we got from 3n squared plus 4 times the 4, so plus 16. 48 plus 16 gives us 64. So if the rule was 3n squared plus 4n, we'd get the numbers 7, 20, 39 and 64. So there's a difference of, well, we, wa we wanted 9 but we only got 7. So there's a difference of 2. Uh, we wanted 22, but we only got 20. So there was a difference of 2. We wanted 41, but we only got 39. So there's a difference of 2. And we wanted 66, but we, wanted, um, but we only got 64. So there's a difference of 2 again. So the rule, 3n squared plus 4n, gives us a number sequence that's always, that, or that's almost always right, but it's just always out by 2. So we'll try 3n squared plus 4n plus 2 as the rule. And we get um, what we had before plus 2 makes 9. What we had before plus 2 makes 22. 39 plus 2 makes 41. And 64 plus 2 makes 66. And now that matches the numbers 
that we were looking for. So the rule must be, so this is a kind of strategy that you could use for any quadratic rule.